It feels good to be using this Titan how it's supposed to be made. Portages, deep powder, towing, hundreds of pounds of gear, hundreds and hundreds of pounds of man. It feels so good, dude. And it is an absolute ice fishing machine. Man, I've been meaning to do a snowmobile walkthrough all year long, but it didn't feel right to do it when we had zero snow, which this is my first year running this Polaris Titan with the Pro Star S4. And you can blame the lack of snow and the lack of ice on me because when this thing hit the garage, I swear the forecast changed immediately. But rest, guess what? We found some, we found some of the fluffy white stuff. We found 30 inches of ice. We're actually up at Baker's Narrows Lodge right now in Manitoba. Just a magical place. We're chasing lake trout. We're going through portages for 50 miles to get back to walleyes that maybe haven't seen a bait the whole year. Giant everything, gorgeous scenery. And this place is built for this sled and it feels so good to put it to work how it's meant to be. I've been using it around home all season on glare ice and it is incredible for hauling gear. And thanks to that big old radiator, it doesn't overheat even with no snow. But man, for these last three, four, five days, we've really been giving it a workout. And I guess I just wanna do a little run through of this machine. So first off, before I start hitting all the little accessories and bolt-ons and add-ons, the reason for the Titan, the big 20 inch wide track, it can tow a truck. They literally have a, a YouTube video showing it pulling a truck and then all of a sudden a trailer that's also attached to the truck. So it doesn't matter if I'm packing for ice camping and I have five, 600 pounds back there. I haven't even had to put this thing in low yet. You don't even know it's back there, which is incredible. The 20 inch wide track floats great. It can go through everything on years where we have slush. I want that thing on my side. And the S4, the cool thing about that four stroke no maintenance. I don't have jugs of oil bouncing around back in here on an hour long rip out to the fishing spot or worry about adding coolant to it. It's literally like my outboard where at the end of the year I do an oil change. So not worrying about maintenance, good gas mileage. The torque and towing is unreal. It's quiet. It starts right up. It's got a block heater so I can plug it in if it is like negative 25 or negative 28 and know it's going to start up. So I've just been unbelievably impressed with this machine. I picked it up through Mies Outland and Watkins. Could not be more happy with how that process went. They were super helpful, very friendly, and that showroom just blew me away. Here's my favorite analogy. This is like the three quarter ton work truck of snowmobiles. Some people want the Corvette of snowmobiles. They go 130 and brap around. I want that work truck. They can go anywhere, tow anything, do anything. For a quick run through, we'll just start at the front. I did a digger auger rack, got my lithium 40 volts on there with the big 10 inch steel bit right now because we are way up in the middle of nowhere chasing fish where I don't think they could even get their nose in an eight inch hole sometimes. Add a little tool holder on there to keep pliers and scissors where you know where they're at. If you walk back here, this is overkill. This is my second windshield. I got a Helix 10 on here. I put an Arc Lab mount on the handlebars with one of the little $20 uh, cigarette lighter plugs. And uh, I just took this off my boat. I mean, a seven inch would fit great right there, but I didn't want to buy a special unit. So took it off the front of my boat in the winter time, slapped her on there. I've got lake maps when I'm in not 15 hours north of home, <laughs> waypoints. And up here, the biggest thing is having trails. So you know how to get back when you're on the road. I'm going to keep walking back here and as you can see fishing off of this thing is my favorite no more kneeling down at the holes or whatever so i make things within an arm's reach i actually mount my live scope on this otter box a monster box with one of the arc lab base plates so i can flip two switches take it off click it in and i literally can go 45 across the lake 
and this thing is not moving. So that's really cool. And one of the reasons for mounting it there too, when I'm fishing off of this machine, and let's say I'm in search mode, hole hopping, I don't even have to lift that unit up to hop from hole to hole. I can leave it there and throw my transducer down and I'm fishing. And a lot of the times I'll even have a dead stick with a second hole over there while I'm jigging here. And here's a little tip for you. All these boys up in the bush going through portages and stuff, if you ever wonder why they have auger racks that are not perpendicular, they're all in line, their transducer poles are all in line, it's because they have skinny, skinny little portages that they creep through. So I got to rip that bad boy off on this last little trail into this lake, but typically, when I'm going to the next spot, I throw it in there, cinch it down, and I'm good. Uh, otherwise, with this pole now, what I should have done in the first place is pull the pin and throw it inside the box. But uh, I actually also have one of these base plates mounted inside of the monster box. And the purpose for that was for these long trips and portages to put the unit and the transducer in the box so there's nothing hanging out. But uh, I guess I was in a little bit of a rush this morning. So let's keep walking back. Well, hold on one sec. On the inside here, I mount these little uh, Rapala Smart Hub pucks so I can change different accessories. So like on this one, it's got a little rod hold. Oh, there she goes. <laughs> I got the rod holder one and I just keep uh, actually a little ice scoop so that I always have one handy. But you can swap different things in there. So I like keeping that one at the ready. I've got a little cup holder on the other side. And the cool thing with the monster box and the reason I wanted to have it is because you can bolt things on it however you want. So I got the uh, clam pucks here so that I can pop these on and off if I want to say put a rattle reel there or whatever. For me, it's two four place rod holders on each side. I don't normally ever have more than four rods, but this way with the big two up, my buddy can have his rods on the other side too. And we don't even have to bring a rod case and they're just easy to grab and swab. And with these little pucks here, you can just pop this off and I can bring it into my hub house if I want to as well. So that's how I like laying that out. And if we keep coming back here, I don't think I'm gonna show you in this right now because we just put on a lot of miles, but well, I'll give you a little preview. Those plates are so sturdy, you can literally open this up and you're good without that live scope flexing. But this just gets all the stuff I don't want in a sled. Typically, I hardly have to pull a sled because with the otter box, I can fit so much, so much goodies in there. But big old tow hitch, like I said, this thing tows like an absolute beast. I'm always pulling my X200 on the back when I'm pulling a sled, whether it's for flipping up or I take the seats out of there and I can load an entire weekend's worth of ice camping stuff just in this sled. It has been an absolute dream running this thing this year. I'm already seeing like five things that I forgot to mention that I wanted to make sure I hit, but you get the gist of it. This machine has been an absolute dream come true this year. This is the basic way that I love to lay it out to make it an absolute ice fishing workhorse. And we are not done hitting the hard stuff yet. <laughs>